Welcome to Electron Line and what we're going to do here is we're going to build up on what we saw in the previous video where we calculated the buoyancy force, the force due to the viscosity of the liquid and the force due to the drag of an, a large object like a large sphere moving through a liquid very fast. The liquid is water at 20 degrees centigrade and so what we found was that the buoyancy force was 138 newtons the force caused by the viscosity of liquid was 57 newtons and the force caused by the drag was a very large 6,644 newtons, so the dominant force here. So what would be the acceleration of an object like that if, for example, if we injected, uh, let's say, something the size of a bowling ball made out of metal and we inject it into the water in such a way that as it enters the water it's moving at 20 meters per second <clears throat> and let's say the mass is 113 kilograms, water 20 degrees centigrade, radius of the ball is 15 centimeters, what would happen? And of course you can see that the weight will be pulling it down and then we have the three, three retarding forces, the buoyancy force, the force caused by the viscosity of the liquid and the force caused by the drag in the liquid. So here F equals ma, acceleration therefore is 1 over m times the force and the force would be the weight minus the three retarding forces and so that would be the equation we want to use for an object if we want to include the force caused by the drag. And of course in this case that's the dominant force, we cannot leave it out. So let's plug in the numbers. We already had calculated the previous three uh, retarding forces. We had not yet calculated the weight. So that would be 113 times 9.8. <clears throat> that would be 1,107 newtons. Minus the buoyancy force which is 138 newtons. Minus the force caused by the viscosity which is 57 newtons and minus 6,644 newtons. So you can see that this would be equal to 1 over 113 times so 1107 uh, minus 138 minus 57 and minus 6644 that would be minus 5732 and divide that by 113 and we get an acceleration of minus 50.7 meters per second square. So you can see that's enormously quick acceleration. So if you drop a bowling ball from a sufficient height so when it enters the water, or I should say not a bowling ball, but a ball the size of a bowling ball but made out of metal, solid metal with an enormously large mass, it enters the water and immediately <clears throat> the drag forces would begin to slow down at a very rapid acceleration. So what would the forces be like if we had a speed instead of 20 meters per second, we had a speed of 10 meters per second. So let's do this again, but now the velocity is equal to 10 meters per second. So we can then see that the force, the acceleration is equal to 1 over 113 times the weight would still be the same, would be no different, 1107. The buoyancy force is also not associated with any velocity, that would be 138. But notice that the viscous, the force caused by the viscosity is linearly dependent on the velocity, so the velocity goes from 20 to 10, that would cut the forces due to viscosity by 2, so instead of 57, that would now be, let's say, it looks like 29, so minus 29, or let's call it 28, close enough. And then finally, here we can see that since, it's, since the force caused by the drag is related to the velocity squared, if we have the velocity, it would be one-fourth the uh, viscous force, we take 6644 and divide that by 4. So that would be 1661. So notice that the weight and the buoyancy force would remain the same. The force caused by the viscosity of the fluid would now only be half because it now has half the velocity and the force caused by the drag would be one-fourth because we're it's related to the velocity squared and if we take half the velocity it's one quarter of the force. So what would be the acceleration if the velocity is at 10 meters per second? All right. So what do we get here? We get 1107 uh, minus 138 minus 28 minus 1661 and so that would be equal to 1 over 113 times a negative 720 and so divide by 113 and we get negative 6.4 meters per second squared. So notice it's a tremendous change in the acceleration. So the forces become much more in, uh, together. With other words, the net force becomes closer and closer to zero. So with the initial 
fast deceleration of 50.7 meters per second squared, 20 meters per second. The acceleration now is down to minus 6.4 meters per second squared when the object is now moving at 10 meters per second. So it would slow down rather quickly. And what would the forces be at 5 meters per second? So let's take a look. <clears throat> so V is equal to 5 meters per second. Let's do this again. So we have the acceleration is equal to 1 over 113 times, again, the weight would not change, still the same weight, the buoyancy force would not change, but again, now went from 10 to 5, again, that would have the, the uh, force caused by the viscosity, so now we're down to 14 newtons, and again, if we went from 10 to 5 meters per second, again, that would be one quarter the previous value. The drag force is related to the velocity squared. If we have the velocity, that's one quarter. So again, we need to take this number and divide it by four. So we take 1661 divided by four, and we get 415. <clears throat> so that would be equal to one over 113 times, and if we add all those numbers up, what do we get? 1107 minus 138 minus 14, and minus 415 equals, and that would now be a positive 540. So divide that by 113, and we get a positive 4.8, 4.8 meters per second squared. What that means, now that we have a positive value, now you can see that the weight would be a larger number than those three retarding forces. In other words, the net force would be this way, and the object would actually be picking up speed. In other words, if a bowling ball or a, a ball the size of a bowling ball made out of pure metal, uh, solid metal, and was moving downward in water, you can see that the net force would be downward and it actually would be accelerating at that point and moving faster and faster. So the terminal velocity would be somewhere between 5 meters per second and 10 meters per second. At that point, the, the forces downward, the weight of the object would equal the three forces upward, and then the, we would have reached the terminal velocity. So what we're going to do now is in the next video, we're actually going to show you how to calculate the terminal velocity in this case, because it's a much bigger problem here where we have four forces at play, and we need to find the point at which the net force equals zero, and we'll show you in a moment how to do that.